Hey everybody. I am being swarmed with mosquitoes, so I'm going to make this really quick. We are in Palisade, Minnesota. Behind me is the Mississippi River. I didn't mention this in the... Man, there's some mosquitoes everywhere. I didn't mention, mention this in the... Um, yeah, I know, they brought in Kim too, so that's why the camera's moving. Um, yesterday I crossed the Mississippi six times. Ow! And... Uh, I crossed the Mississippi two more times a day, so I've crossed the Mississippi eight times on the on the road so far. Talk faster, Joe. I'm talking faster, and uh, so there's the Mississippi. It's 50, 50 yards across. It's a lot wider than it used to be, and the mosquitoes are a lot bigger than they used to be. So see you later. Bye. Well, hello everybody, and welcome to day two of the Mississippi River Trail. Today I ended up going uh, 90 miles, which was similar to yesterday. Uh, I got another good day, another good uh, day of weather. Uh, 70 degrees, a little chilly starting out. It was like 54 when I started out. For me, it's a little chilly. But it warmed up pretty quickly and um, Overall, a pretty good day. Uh, so, uh, we went from Deer River to Aitken, Minnesota. And um, so, we're out about 7 o'clock. Got here about, when did we get here? About? I got here at 2 30. Well, you got here at 2 30. You got here about 3 30. I got here at 3 30. The big um, hiccup of the day was a dirt road. Dirt roads are not good to ride on when you have a road bike. And I found myself on a state route that was pretty scary. Uh, there was a very to little no berm, clearly a very busy state route. And the trail took me along that state route for about two miles. So I survived the two miles. And then it turned me off onto a dirt road, and I had a decision to make. Do I take the dirt road and be safe, be safer, but have a more difficult ride because I'm on a dirt road? Or do I take the easy route and be scared? And I chose to not be scared. I took the safe route. And so I went down this dirt. It's not just dirt. It's a gravelly dirt road. Um... And I've, I've done this before uh, when I was in Wyoming a few years back. It just isn't pleasant. Uh, you're waiting for your tires to puncture. Um, traffic does go by every once in a while, kicking up dust and dirt and throwing stones. And um, it's not. It's just not fun. So I was on that road for I don't know three or four or five miles. So it wasn't horrible. Uh, I got through it okay. Uh, and then um, we got back on pavement. Other than that, uh, the, uh, the the trip was pretty uh, pretty good. So we'll get to our segments now. Um, and um, tomorrow we're going to go from uh, Aiken to Saint Cloud. Tomorrow is day three. And for those of you who, who uh, have heard my stories and my trips before, day threes are notoriously the roughest day for whatever reason. I really struggle on day threes. So Kim's excited about tomorrow, aren't you, Kim? Oh, yeah. Yes, that was an affirmative. She's excited about tomorrow. And, of course, because I'm not smart, I, I scheduled a 100-mile day tomorrow. We're going to be going about 105 miles and um, on what is notoriously the hardest day of my long trips. Good news is the first half of the trip tomorrow is bike trail. Now, I haven't learned yet if the bike trail is paved or not. I'm hoping it's paved. If so, the first half is going to be actually pretty pretty fun. Uh, so we'll see what happens tomorrow. Um, I have crossed the Mississippi River three times today. That makes a total of nine. Uh, yesterday I crossed it six times. And so I've gone across the Mississippi River nine times uh, in total. So we'll keep track of that 
as we go along. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's all about tomorrow. I'll talk more about tomorrow, tomorrow night, of course, uh, when we when we get when we get there to St. Cloud. Otherwise, enjoy these segments. All right, see you later. Bye. So the one person I talked to today uh, was actually another bicyclist. I was out in the middle of nowhere, Minnesota, and I was coming up quickly on a uh, bicyclist who uh, looked as though he was probably local, um, didn't have any kind of fancy bike, didn't look like he was going very fast, uh, probably in the 70s, late 60s, 70s, and uh, pretty ragged looking bike. And so I'm zooming past him. And I say good morning. Now, you have to understand, I take a lot of pride in my bike being quiet. So he did not hear me coming up behind him. Usually when you're biking on the road, your, your ears are open to the sound of um, cars coming up behind you. Uh, my bike doesn't make any noise. So I kind of scared him. Uh, actually, I probably scared him pretty good. When I said good morning, as I'm coming up behind him, he looked over at me real quick. And he said, oh, good morning. And I said, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? He's like, yes, it is. And by that time, I was out of earshot from him. So, yeah, quick, simple, easy. And that was the one person I talked to today. Welcome to another segment of What Was That Dead Thing? Yesterday, I was pleasantly surprised at the uh, safety um, habits of Minnesota wildlife. As you know, you're bicycling, you're on the road, but it's not just bicyclists. Everything needs to be very careful when they're on the roads. Um, if bicyclists have helmets, they've got you know uh, reflectors, wear bright colored clothing. The wildlife needs to be careful too because they they can get uh, they can get in some dangerous situations. Um, so for, if you remember yesterday, um, our tally was uh, one fish, yes, we saw a fish yesterday on the road, and one turtle. Today was interesting, we, 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 I found more. I, more. I found more fatalities on the road. Um, um, actually, I found a porcupine, believe it or not. At least I'm not, I'm pretty sure it was a porcupine. Are there porcupines in Minnesota? I don't know. Kim doesn't know. I think there are porcupines. Well, it was a porcupine, so I guess there are porcupines in Minnesota. So we found a porcupine who evidently did not uh, live up to the standards of, of safety when on the road. I saw a bird. I want to say it was a starling. Um, my wife's a big fan of starlings. Right, Kim? Right. No, she's not a no. big fan of starlings. And I found three turtles. So turtles, not quick on the uptake. Um... Uh, interesting known fact, turtles are actually one of the fastest reptiles in all the animal kingdom. Most people don't know that. They can zoom like no reptile has ever zoomed before. The thing with turtles, though, is they have a habit of being overconfident. Because they have that hard shell, they don't feel like they need to zoom everywhere and stay safe because they've got a hard shell around them. So who's going to mess with them? No one's going to mess with them. So as a result, of course, when crossing the road, turtles take their time because they're overconfident with their, uh, with their shell. Um, and uh, they don't zoom anywhere. Um, so maybe that's part of the reason, uh, which, which is the lesson for all of us. The lesson is when you're on the roads, safety is very important. Never, ever, ever, ever be overconfident. No matter how much gear you have, never be overconfident. So three more turtles porcupine, a bird, and and a UFO. Now, what would you say is a UFO? Well, for this segment, it is not an unidentified flying object. For this segment, it is an unidentified furry object. Every once in a while, you come across a fatality that, um, well, let's just say, you really don't know what it was. You know it was something, but you're not sure what. So we're going to call those UFOs. So today, three turtles, a porcupine, a bird, and a UFO. And so that, of course, brings our tally up to what? Turtles take the lead. There's now four turtles, one porcupine, 
one bird, one fish, and one UFO. We will continue to tally these up as the days come and go for all those who are fans of this segment, which when I say fan, I mean probably just me. I don't know if Kim's a fan. Kim, are you a fan? Uh, no. Kim is not really a fan of this segment. Nevertheless, we'll keep it rolling. And I almost forgot the most important statistic. Zero bicyclists and zero river otters. That makes me happy. That makes Mitch happy. Right, Mitch? High five. Oh, sorry. High five. So we're going to continue, hopefully, to see those zeros stay the same. What's that? We haven't found the helmet for you yet. I know, we'll keep looking. They don't make them that small. The Barbie helmet didn't fit you. It was too small. We'll figure it out. And for our final segment, it is Kim and Mitch's fantastic adventures. Here you go. They went to the Judy Garland Museum. I had no idea Judy Garland was from Grand Rapids, Minnesota. Grand Rapids. We went through yeah. Grand Rapids, Minnesota today, and Judy Garland was from Grand Rapids, Minnesota. So enjoy the pictures, everybody.